questions basic to your reality. October 2013 Beloved one, I would speak with you now about questions, questions that are basic to your reality, questions that come up. Oftentimes you will be asking these questions of yourself, and many times ones are asking these questions of me, questions such as, Who am I? I awaken in the morning and I seem to remember the person I was the day before. I get up and I do what is accustomed on that day. And yet at the same time you feel that persona is not all of you. You feel that it is part of you. It is in truth an act, as you are the actor actress playing a certain part in what you see to be reality, lower case r. And you do it very well. You remember the personality from the day before and the day before and the day before, and maybe you will do a bit of reshaping and changing during the day as there may be new friends who come with some new ideas. And you may change what seems to be the personality as you go through different stages of life. Who am I? As I have said unto you many, many times, you are the extension of the one divine source. You are the extension of the one mind, the one. I will not even call it being, because that will identify it with limits, but of one universal energy, and yet it is not limited to this universe. You are even more than what this universe will suggest. Who am I? I am divine. I am the creative one, capital O. I am the creative one who is creating my reality, lower case r. Each moment as I go through the day and through the night. I am creative because the one mind is creative. That is its nature. And you, because you are an extension, I will not say child, because that implies that there may be a separation between source and child, you are an extension of the one creative mind going forth experiencing itself. Some of your wise ones have written about the mind of God and how it is forever recreating itself and expanding, expanding upon what has seemed to be the experience of the day before, the year before, the time before. And this is true, because you want to know. What else is there? And beyond the fulfillment of the purpose of time there will yet be expansion. You are, even as you see yourself to be contained within the skin of the body, much more than just what you see. There is what your scientists have shown you, the aura of energy around you. They have taken the photographs of the different colors of the aura as you have been in different emotional states, and you have seen how this can shift and change. That is part of what you are, and yet you are more than that. Your scientists are not yet at the place of being able to register more than just what is quite dynamic around you. Your energy expands farther than you can imagine, and there will come a time when you will know that energy. You will know yourself to be unlimited energy, unlimited. I will call it love. Who am I? Am I just a speck of dust rattling around in a big universe? Am I going to get lost? No, you can never be lost. Separated ego can say to you that there is a possibility that you might be lost somewhere and that you would never be found, but separated ego is just that. It is separated from its source and it tells you only what it knows in separation. The oneness of you, when you touch that space, knows itself to be all and to be expansive and to be forever ongoing and creating. So then the next question comes up. Why am I? What is my purpose? That question is asked so many times. What is my purpose? I'm living a life, I'm doing the best I can with it, with all of the challenges. Sometimes friends and co-workers offer me a challenge, but I don't have to take what they want to give me. They are very free in giving, but I don't have to take it. Why am I living this life? What is my purpose? Your purpose is to be alive, to be happy, to be joyful, to be the light that you are, to be creative, and to know that you are the one who is creating your reality moment by moment by moment. And if you do not like what you are creating, then stop and write a new script, because you are the one who is writing the script in the first place. If you do not like it, stop. There is no one and no thing that is more powerful than you are. The world is not more powerful than you are, although the voice of the world may scream that it is more powerful and the body may scream that it is more powerful, 
but you are the creator of the world and the body. You are the one who has agreed that you would express for a temporary time with the physicality, with the body, the molecules of the dust of our Holy Mother Earth, and that you will activate a body so that you can walk amongst the brothers and sisters, give them hugs, talk with them, be in relationship with them, be in joy, truly enjoy with them, because you are the all-powerful one. Now, I know that the world does not say that to you. The world says everything is a challenge and you will have to do the best you can with it, and you do. But the world is of your making. You are making your world as you go along. As you wake up in the morning, before you hop out of bed, or before you fall out of bed sometimes, visualize how you want your day to be. It only takes a moment or so. You do not have to spend what is called the 15 minutes, one half hour in bed. You do not have to even get up and sit in a certain position and breathe through one nostril and face the east or the west or whatever. You do not have to have ritual about it. Just pause for a moment as you wake up and visualize how you want that day to be. If you know the people that you are going to be interacting with that day, visualize meeting them and speak with them heart to heart, mind to mind, before you even put the feet on the floor and you will find that truly the day will be different because you have decreed that it is going to be different. If there is a challenge that you are working with, allow yourself to look at it as a gift, because everything you make for yourself is a gift. It has a blessing in it, and the blessing is to rise up over it and to know that you have brought it about. And if you have brought it about, and I assure you that you have, then you can recreate it and change it. So who am I? the extension of the one creative source, the one mind. Why am I? For the purpose of living in joy. Who are you? Why are you in my world? You are in my world so that we can interact. We can give the hugs, we can give the shoulder if one needs a shoulder to rest upon, or the ear to listen to someone's story. You are in my life because I have created you to be in my life. Now, you have your own individuality as you understand reality, lowercase r. So that you are not controlled by my thinking that you are in my world. You are in my world, but you also have the power to not be in my world. In just a moment you can step out. You are free to get up and walk out if you want to. Or you can absent the mind. Your body is still in my world, but you are not. So why are you? You are for the purpose of bringing joy. Now, there have been lifetimes when you have lived a solitary life and you have said, I don't want anybody else in my life. I'm going to live in this cave all by myself. I have everything I need. I manifest it for myself. And that has been okay for a lifetime or two or three or twenty. But then you have come to a place where you have said, I wonder what else there is to experience. I wonder if there is someone else like me. I wonder if there is someone else not like me. I wonder. And as soon as that small idea comes, I wonder, immediately everything changes, and it changes for the good. Now, separated ego, again, will say, look, things may not be perfect, but don't change anything, because I am comfortable with these things that aren't really perfect. So don't go rocking the boat. But I say unto you, go ahead and rock the boat. What happens if the boat turns over? You walk on water. Okay, you are the one creating the water. What is to keep you from walking on it if you want to? You do this already when you have what is called the rainy day and you have some puddles of water out there. You walk on water. No big deal. Just because you think maybe it is a bit deeper, it might be a big deal, but not really. The principle is still the same. You can walk on water. I did, and you have. But you have come to this lifetime saying, Okay, now I want to forget most of what I've done in other lifetimes so that I can experience things anew. You start out as the small infant that ones have said is a tabula rasa. In other words, a blank slate. But truly, no small one comes without their own personality traits. You see in the same family that there may be one who is really right there up in your face and another one who is a little more timid and says, Will it be alright if I? 
They are in the same biological family, but they have remembrances and moldings from what you would term previous lifetimes. Who am I? Why am I? Who are you? Why are you? Because it is to play together, to be in joy together, to understand that you are the one expressing as the many. Truly there is only one of us. It is the one extension of divinity. But we have created many so that we can play with each other. We tried being solitary. It was okay as a solitary god, but after a while we wanted to know more. Always the god self wants to express itself and experience itself in many other ways. So I have created all of you to be with me in this adventure. Now, that brings me to a very good point. How about loved ones who have passed on? Are they gone? Of course, they are not gone. There is no place to go to outside of the One, capital O that we are. So they are right here always with you, loving you, understanding you in ways that they did not seem to when there was the human interaction going on. If you find yourself perhaps singing a song that reminds you of a loved one, that was their favorite song. They really like that song. Well, they are right there singing it into your ear, reminding you, I'm here, the beloved pets that you also create for companionship and for joy see other dimensions. Sometimes you will see the beloved pet looking around and you ask, well, what do you see? Who do you see? They will not tell you, but you can intuit who and what is going on. Beloved ones never leave you. When you decide that you want to release the body and absent yourself from this interaction, you will always be with me. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. In other words, unto the ending of the belief that there could be separation. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, and especially after the end of the world. Then there will come the knowingness of oneness, of joy, of not having to overcome anything. The world loves to make judgment, and the world loves to say that marriage, commitment, relationship means until death do us part. Well, that is true until the death of that relationship. Then you move on. You then come into a new reality, small case r. Is there a God? Yes. In this reality you believe that there is a God, and you have many definitions of God. That is why you have so many different religious gatherings where the one who is in authority will stand up and tell you what you believe about God. You are seeing now some clashes, unnecessary but yet they have been brought about so that you can examine who and what is God. Is there a God, first of all, and the answer is yes. Who is God? Everything you see. What is God? It is the Divine One Mind going forth to express and experience itself and how it does this is in a multitudinous variety of ways. Many different varieties. And it is all God. We have talked quite a bit recently about the hologram that you make for yourself. In other words, the reality, lower case R, that you make for yourself. And it is as a hologram that is playing out in front of you as you allow yourself to step back from it far enough to behold it in that way. It is a reality in which you function, and it is at the same time an illusion. A book which I have dictated, A Course in Miracles, speaks of the illusion. I speak now, because I want to choose another word for it, of the hologram that you are making for yourself and how you can behold that hologram right in front of you in a moment or so of oneness, where you step back from it and you say, Hey, I can see what is going on. And with that feeling, that knowing, you are often right back into it again. But as time, again, a construct that you have made in this reality, goes on, you come to a place where you stay in the place of beholder longer and longer, where you know that everything truly serves the remembrance of the at one meant, the atonement. Not atonement because you have done anything wrong and you somehow have to atone for it and you have to be down on the knees and say so many rituals, etc., not that kind of atonement. The atonement which I speak of is the remembrance of that one meant when you know yourself to be the one, and only, extension of the one and only creative principle. Now, the mental mind loves to play with words, with concepts and constructs that you make. The mental mind tells you that you are limited. 
You are limited by the body and what it feels like. You are limited by the personality that you have defined. You are limited by time. That is one of the big limitations that you have built into this reality. And why have you built it in? So that you can then leave it, so that you can say all time is now. Many think they are limited by the geographical miles from a place. But in time, and beyond time, you will come to the realization that you are the one creating any and all limitations. That is the point I would like you to take from this message, that you are creating your reality, and your questions help you realize your reality. Imagine if you had one million marbles of all different colors and they were in a huge glass bowl. That is just a symbol of what your realities are. You reach in and you take a marble. Maybe it is a purple one, and you say, wow. That is really, really pretty, but I like the red one too, and you take the red one. And then, oh, I like the clear one, so then you take a clear one. You have all of the million marbles in the glass bowl to choose from, and you are allowed to pick any of them and all of them. There is no limit. Everything is right there for you. Just visualize it. Know that it is in that huge glass bowl and it is going to come to you. And then when it comes to you, jump up and down like a little kid and say, Wow! It happened. It really happened. And the joy in you is made complete. Everything you could ever want is there already for you. All you have to do is to receive it. And I say unto you, allow yourself to feel the energy. Wow! I didn't know that could happen. It really came to me. It came to me. It didn't come to someone else who might be more worthy. It came to me. Hey, it really did. Feel the energy. Live in that energy, because that is truly the Christ energy come alive. That is truly who you are. You are the Christ energy come into a reality that you are making moment by moment by moment, and your reality will never cease until you say you want it to cease. Even if you decease the body, your reality is going to go on. You are always going to be, and you will always know yourself to be. And you will come to a place where your joy will be complete, because you will know that you are the one expressing, in this reality, as the many. So be it. Yeshua Ben Joseph, Jesus. Channeled by Judith Coates. www.oakbridge.org